um, or talk a little bit about yourself and your artistic practice kind of in general. Okay. Um, so I'm Guy. I live and work in Lubbock, Texas. I'm a professor of art and chairperson of the painting program at Texas Tech University. Uh, I am a maker of drawings. Um, probably they could be classified as both drawings or paintings, but drawing seems like a, a truer word to me. Um, they're executed primarily in chalk pastel on paper, uh, and broadly they, they address, um, I think, sort of questions about um, consent, bodily agency, embodied looking, um, time perception, and, and desire. I think those are probably the salient points in the work. Yeah. So this piece, like most of the work that I do, um, originated uh, in this sort of ethically organized um, encounter that prioritizes the consent and the agency of the subject. So um, the person in this work is named Kirsten, and I have her permission to share that. She's a um, person I love very much, a very important person in my life. Um, and in, in the making of this piece, I uh, photographed her um, at her invitation uh, I'm a bad photographer, um, which is actually weirdly important to the, the sort of conceptual project of the work. Um, the, I try to make the camera a sort of um, extension of, of my body rather than a sort of instrument of surveillance or something. Um, my photos are extremely spontaneous and unpolished. They're mostly blurry um, and, and poorly composed or not composed at all. Um, so I kind of, um, in the encounter between us, I'm sort of blindly depressing the shutter button and, um, you know, gleaning these sort of snapshots of, from the encounter that we have. The encounter begins and ends when the subject chooses. Um, and I'm there, um, I think, sort of to behold and hold space for them and, and in turn, they for me. Um, and then I take the, those photos into the studio and I, I make the drawing. Um, I don't know if this is related. I might be sort of meandering from the question, but hopefully it'll be adjacent. Um, uh, my, my primary endeavor is to show people's bodies not as objects or things, but as living processes. Um, and, and that the, the subject, the two subjects in this encounter, myself and Kirsten, in this case, um, we constitute each other um, and, and see one another. And so in the kind of staggered repetition and chaos of the drawing, I'm trying to sort of retrieve this lived experience of, um, that is intense and immersive and full of movement and alive rather than flattening someone into, um, you know, in, in, into something that could be more readily objectified, I guess. Not that that's... Not that we can ever do away with that totally, but right. trying to make trouble with it, I guess. <laughs> Loved how you kind of talked about this idea of comparing paper to skin um, and experimenting with different kinds of paper in almost a um, sculptural way. If you want to, you know, if you could talk more about, about that part of it. I would love to. It's like the talking <laughs> about paper <laughs> is, is the my favorite part. Um, so... Uh, Right, so I, I, I choose paper because it's always in some kind of physical flux because it's so responsive to heat and moisture. This doesn't make for a, for a really um, stable art object <laughs> which can present issues in shipping uh, and hanging. But, um, but I, I love that paper has the, yeah, has the sort of properties of a living thing. So when, um, when the paper collage is made this host body for the drawing, it should render the drawing um, a, a kind of active, literally breathable organism. Um, with this piece, uh, and, and I, since we, we were talking about the title earlier, um, the paper collage seems to make it possible for me to suggest a, a, like, an unbounded space so, so mm -hmm. the, that the space is just proliferating forever. Um, and collage really makes that possible because it doesn't have the, the really certain edges of something like a taut stretched canvas that, um, that has this kind of, you know, fixity and, and finitude. So I, um, paper is, paper is also just so, I, 
it, it's so it's so like um it's so humble and it just <clears throat> announces how vulnerable it is um and you know it it might not make m my work the most d desired um like com commodity but maybe that's right um that, that might be appropriate <laughs> Oh, like uh, collaboration. And I know we touched on that a little bit with like the idea of consent. Um, but it, I mean, that is another thing that I pulled out quite a bit um, from your statement. Um, and then the work as well. Um, how like is the collab? Like, can you talk a little bit more about collaboration? Yeah. Um, so there are probably sort of two um, dimensions in my practice that collaboration takes place one is the right is the the um intercorporeal intersubjective thing with the with the person that i'm drawing um and the other is is working in a more um literal you know in practice form of collaboration um in in working with uh with the people that i make drawings of um I, I definitely would characterize that as a as a collaborative um, effort where it's so essential that it be a really vocal um, uh, and very communicative sort of e event. Um, and it's very important to me that I don't make uh, that I don't make drawings or that I don't get those photographs and then um, have the ability to make something that's going to humiliate or hurt or otherwise not be what a what someone's comfortable um, with having you know having an image represent of them. So um, so I try to keep the the line of communication very very open. Um, I it's important that they have uh, a say also, and if their name is is used, if their name is used in the title or in things like this, where I'm talking about the work, um, it, that disclosure aspect of it. Um, is important to the to the ethical aspect of what's going on, but I also like I, I have um we're this is sort of an, a nascent project, but I I'm part of a, a small feminist collective with some close friends um, and with the other people in the collective and I we participate in each other's work uh, a great deal um, and uh, we we photograph each other and we make drawings of each other and we take molds off each other's bodies and it's um, it's 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 very uh, symbiotic is not the word that I want, but it's it's that we participate rather equally in each other's work, um, and it's a kind of a solidarity thing maybe as well. And then the last thing I'll mention on that, um, my partner, uh, an artist named Lando Valdez, he and I now work in collaboration um, almost full time. So we're both painters slash draw drawers drafts people i never know there's never been a good word for, for the person who draws um and so we we make these really really large scale drawing paintings together and that uh that's very satisfying in a way that i i never knew it could be it's really uh it's it's just um it's exciting uh and 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 liberating and and re presents drawing back to me in a way that I, I just didn't know it could seeing somebody else's language, somebody else's brain really come in and, um, and, and change or reinvent the direction of the work is, is so exciting because drawing is, it's a voice, you know, and it's this, um, it's this in, in incredibly, um, powerful declarative act. So having, uh, yeah, having, having another voice right on the paper with me is awesome. And I highly <laughs> recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, again, um, just working at this incredible scale, and I know this wasn't even the largest of the pieces that you had submitted as well, um, is that, and it sounds like that's something that's very uh, purposeful on your end, that you want them every, you want things to be this scale. I don't know if there's more that you can add to that. Oh, but yeah, I would love to. That's a great question. Um, yeah, I think it's the the scale in my work has, has sometimes been um, mistaken as just a, like an attempt to be uh, spectacular or excessive, but um, there's that's really not <laughs> that's really not why I choose to work like this. Um, and it's such an impractical way of working that <laughs> if I if I if it if I didn't feel like it was so integral to the, to the conceptual project of the work, I really wouldn't do it. Um, part of it, um, I think, is on sort of the the front end of making the work. Um, it's very physically strenuous for me. I'm on, um, particularly with the way that I draw. Um, so I don't, 
you know, I don't have an organized process with a grid or anything that would allow me to work in sort of a, um, like a, a, a localized way or sort of move through things, um, in a, in a kind of orderly fashion. Um, it's, it's all, um, you know, reaching and climbing ladders and putting things on the floor. And I have to move my body so much, um, that I, I feel, um, you know, the, a, a heightened, I suppose, bodily presence in the, in the work, which seems important. Um, but more than that, what the scale seems to make possible is for the for the drawing to become a, a more immersive field on the on the receiving end, and that it would be um, that it could be sort of uh, ch challenging in a way to the viewer, or um, challenging, I suppose, only in relation to the way we usually look at images, which is that they're quite compressed and stable, and they can be seemingly known very um, very quickly, sort of in one gulp. Um, but if if the thing is so big, um, you have to um, do this kind of kinetic seeing where you're having to look and move and move through the piece and have it sort of unfold as you navigate it physically. Um, yeah, so that's 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 cool. I suppose that this is just just forgot to say this, but in the in the making of the work, I also I'm realizing more and more how blind I really am to what I'm doing. Um, until until sort of these major um, milestones in the in the production of something, which is sort of um, I haven't quite figured out how to like theorize that or, or or conceptualize what exactly that means or contributes to the process. But because things are so big, and if I'm modeling something, um, I really can't see it in relation to this larger thing. Um, I don't know. It's sort of it is sort of like it unfold. It it, re it reveals itself to me as much as it does, hopefully, to a to a viewer in this kind of gradual, protracted way. Um, just, yeah, those those are some of the things in the in the scale part. So what I'm a couple of questions that I'm asking, you know, of the artists within the exhibition. So it is the Solano Biennial work from the Mountain Plains region, um, and we're just, you know, I was just curious if you had any thoughts. Um, to what it meant to be an artist within the Mountain Plains region, if you think regionality has anything to do with your work or um, other ideas kind of based in, you know, the place that we live in, we, we've chosen to live and work. Yeah, that's a really wonderful question. Um, and there's there's sort of a, a version of this question that I ask myself sometimes about Texas. Um, because I'm not from here, I'm, I'm from the East Coast, um, and I... Uh, you know, I, I particularly, you know, my, my location, Lubbock, Texas, I, I had not, um, with the exception of knowing that Buddy Holly is from Lubbock, which I've always known because <laughs> my dad is a big fan, um, and I'm a fan, uh, but I, I hadn't, I really hadn't known where this was. Um, and so it's, it's been, um, this is my sixth year uh, living, living and working here, and I never could have imagined uh, the life that I would find in this place. Uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful. Um, and it still feels very new. Uh, so I think I'm still sort of, uh, trying to ask myself those questions about, um, either, you know, my, right, my, my identity as an artist here, my role, um, or how my work has been impacted. Um, something that I can, I can say with certainty on this is I'm, I keep, I maintain a studio, um, that's very, very visible here in Lubbock. Um, and it's, it's part of a, the a residency program and um, art studio facility sort of complex called the Charles Adams Studio Project. And I've been a resident um, there for since 2016. So every month my studio is open to um, this enormous art trail event that, uh, that Lubbock has that draws, you know, at least 3,000 people every month. And so the, the community has been... Um, engaging with me and my work in the privacy of my space for years. Um, and I, I could not believe how, um, how much support I've had, um, and how much the, um, the insights of, of my fellow artists here in, in, in Lubbock and my other contacts in the, the, the sort of larger Plains region, uh, how much their technical and conceptual savvy have impacted me and made me think about my work more and more. I, I can't yet 
identify the, like if it's a, um, yeah, if there's kind of a, a regional underpinning to that, um, that, or that that's, or that that's kind of coding some of that, but, um, but there's just extraordinary, just extraordinary people in this vein of the, of the world. Um, people who are both professionals and, and, and lay people in, in, with regard to art. Um, and I've just, I've just been really blown away. So I was so, I'm so happy to be in this biennial and I'm so excited to have this conversation because, um, it, it kind of re affirms to me my feeling of, of belonging and also my desire to have, have this region of the country, um, uh, you know, show, showcased, I suppose, you know, like made, made increasingly visible. I think that's, um, really wonderful. Yeah. Um, and that leads me into my last question, which is, um, we're asking artists again, like, what are you doing at the moment with everything that's going on? And I know, you know, artists are incredibly resourceful. So what are your plans during like our COVID-19 crisis? Do you have any, anything? That's a, that's a great question. Um, I'm extremely fortunate that Londo and I have still have access to our studio. Mm-hmm. We're careful about it because it is offsite. It's not on our own uh, property. Um, but we're, we're fortunate to be able to keep working. Um, we're also, I mean, we're just really lucky that we, we have our health. And so in this moment of kind of this odd, uh, if not also harrowing sort of tra- tranquility um, and, I think there's actually something really, um, something that really serves, uh, serves us to have a little bit of time to withdraw. Um, like I've, I've been surprised to feel that way. (laughs) Um, but there's something about, uh, something about being home that I, uh, I'm grateful for, I guess. Uh, maybe this is all something about, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, re, Re- reconnecting or reestablishing your relationship to your space and your body and your home. Uh, and I think a lot of what's going to happen right now, there's, it's going to be a, there's going to be new thinking and new feeling, and that'll probably have a long gestational period of development, whatever the ideas are that can be harvested from this experience. Um, but I think artists should be, should be kind to themselves. Uh, I, I, ho- I mean, I hope that they, that they can, I know it's, um, there's a lot of, of fear and, and desperation and things being canceled and, mm-hmm. um, and threats to income and stability. And that's, um, that's so frightening, but I, um, but I also, I was saying to a graduate student the other day, uh, who was, you know, t- totally, um, rocked by the fact that she could no longer make these really large scale, um, fiber works that she was doing. And, what was she going to do? And was she going to totally lose her voice? And we talked about her making small works and being resourceful. Um, but I also just mentioned, you know, that I, I'd seen a meme, far be it for me to quote a meme, but I, <laughs> I saw a meme that was, uh, that, that said this important thing that was like, you know, yeah, you've been afforded, you know, this, the, all of this time, but that doesn't mean you actually have to write a novel. Like it doesn't mean you right. have to finish your house. And yeah. <laughs> it was like, meme, this meme has wisdom that I'm, I'm ready to heed. Um, <laughs> like this and, idea that we don't have to be hyper product- productive, like exactly. every moment of our lives. <laughs> exactly. Because we like everybody else in this society is certainly encouraged to measure our worth by our productivity. And that can, that can do a lot of damage um, to us. And, uh, I hope I hope that artists can continue to to do things that are satisfying, whether they um, show sort of immediate relevance to their art practice or not. Mm-hmm. Even if it's uh, it doesn't seem like part of the work, it might later become the work, or it's otherwise creating the right conditions for you to do your thing.